My initial reaction was, you know, no, no, don't, let's not do this. Uh, actually, you know, don't go to anybody else either. Just, just leave it because um, it's not something that really should be done, I, I didn't think. And, and part of me still thinks that. It's... And uh, my agent said, don't, listen, don't, just think about it for a while. Jane would like you to introduce Douglas to a younger audience. And, you know, Jane and her daughter, Polly, are, are fans of your work and, and they think you could do it. Uh, and that's really hard to turn down. When you're used to reading sci-fi and fantasy, you know that usually it's quite serious. But this, you know, this, there was a guy who was looking for a cup of tea, one guy, another guy with two heads who was on the run because he stole a spaceship. It was just all parody and brilliance and one-liners and pratfalls and uh, uh, cosmic buffoonery. It was just amazing. It was like a breath of fresh air. They've endured, I think, because they're so funny. Uh, for me, that's the main thing, that you, br you bring in these uh, cast of hilarious characters and you have them saying very funny things in funny places. Everything, everything is funny and unexpected. We were always going around talking Monty Python to each other uh, and you know you would say you know wolf nibble tips get them while they're hot and someone else said hey lovely and he look he's not the messiah he's a very naughty boy. <laughs> and then along came Douglas Adams and we were doing that to each other as well and so it stuck in it stuck in the teenage lexicon and then it becomes a part of your memory and a part of your life. Apparently there were notes, but I didn't, and I could have had them, but I didn't want them, and I didn't use any of them. I, I, want, I didn't want to be confusion about who wrote the book. I want to kind of stand up and say, yes, it's me. If you like it, it's me. If you don't like it, it's also me. So I didn't want, the worst thing that could happen would be, you screwed up Douglas Adams' notes. I mean, that's even worse than screwing up your own idea. So uh, I just didn't take it. If Jane doesn't like it, I am not putting that. I'm not gonna go through some kind of um, massive editing process. Now I'm just going to drop it, you know. I sent it in, emailed to Sophie, my agent, and it came back in a few days. Uh, she rang and she said, you know, James read it. And I thought, oh God, this is like, you know, an episode of Ally McBeal where the jury come back after half an hour. It's always bad. Uh, she's read two pages and she just doesn't like it, no. But she, she loved it. I kind of uh, went the Star Trek way. I took a tight group, you know, the, the, the five or whatever, and I stuck with them. So I, I picked my favorites, and that's obviously I picked Arthur, Ford, Trillian, Random, and then you gotta have, you gotta bring back Zephod. And the, the last person uh, I brought back is Wowbagger. <laughs> So he comes into it, uh, and he's a major character now, and he's, um, he's actually one of the love interests, I won't tell you for who. And I've done something very controversial with Zaphod, uh, kind of, I don't know if I should say, uh, but um, I don't know, we'll see. I could get some flack for this, what I've done to his anatomy, where once were two, now there are still two, but one of them is over there. That's all I'm saying. A lot of little references that people will get who've read the series and but there's a lot of stuff that's for first timers and I wanted to get a nice balance um, so that it was there was enough in it for the for the hitchhikers that they would feel fulfilled and there was enough in it from for, for the newcomers that they would feel intrigued and they would go back and read the first five. The best thing that could happen is if a fans you know read the book and the general consensus was you know it's not Douglas Adams but it's funny and I would be very happy with that.